Hello there, my name is Nate Jackson. The Eclipser. Welcome you at long last to part 17 in the ever going Eclipse series spectacular thingamabob. This is Eclipse series number 17, Nikatsu Noir. Five movies to review today, so let's go ahead and get started. Basically, these five movies are the epitome of action, crime dramas, and suspense. Five movies which seem to get a little more and more confusing. Maybe it's because of the directors, but also some of it I feel is because audiences needed more. Uh, I can't speak for you know, all the other movies that were coming out in Japan during this time, but uh, it seemed, from my personal point of view, that the movies became more and more complex. The plots became more complex. We start off with a very, very simple one. Um, who's the director of this? See, I have the box, so it doesn't have... Well, I can look on the thing here. Koryoshi Kurahara's I Am Waiting, or Ore wa Materuze. Um, the movie's from 1957. It runs 91 minutes, black and white, monoral in Japanese with English subtitles, 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio. This movie, the first one, is probably my favorite of the set. It involves this ex-boxer who sees this woman who's going to commit suicide. He takes her in and they kind of fall for each other. However, she quote-unquote belongs to this mob boss guy and that's kind of how their relationship begins. I thought it was a really really cool way to start. I thought um, the lead actor, whose name I cannot remember, uh, Yuhiro Ishihara, uh, I thought he was really, really good, and he's actually, he and uh, the actress who plays the, the, the girl, uh, Psycho, Mai Kitahara, um, both feature in the next movie we'll talk about in a minute, um, and so it's, it was kind of interesting to see that, d even though they were different directors, it seemed like Mikatsu had kind of stock actors that, you know, were, were willing to work with different directors for the same company. So, yeah, I'm waiting, it was... Again, a really kind of a, a very simple story compared to the rest that we that we'll see. And that's why I kind of dug that one. It was a little they're very slow paced, um, definitely nowhere near as complicated as the others. So I just I kind of got into that one a little more. I wasn't scratching my head trying to remember who was who and what was what and what was going on, you know. Um, so that's why I liked I'm waiting the most. Um, I give it an A. Uh, the next one, Rusty Knife, is directed by who's it? Rusty Knife, uh, Toshio Masuda, and it's run or Sabita Knife, and it's from 1958. Runs 90 minutes, black and white, monoral in Japanese with English subtitles, 2.35 to one aspect ratio. Again, as I mentioned before, this movie also stars uh, Yuhiro, Yuhiro Izaha, Ishihara, and Mai Kitahara in the lead parts, and this one. Um, Yuhiro plays a guy, an ex-convict, who runs a bar with his friend, and the two of them end up getting roped into testifying against this guy. They, they, I think they were like part of a, I couldn't remember if they witnessed a murder or they were part of a murder and they were willing to testify against the other guys. And they're, you know, they're, you know the other guy, the guys were, you know, trying to keep them quiet and all that, and you can kind of see what where that's going. Um, another aspect about these movies, at least the first two we saw, I'm Waiting a Rusty Knife, is that they seem to fall into the the pop song um, variations of the pop song genre. Every, you know, both songs start with a, both movies start with a song that kind of has the title in it or kind of describes the title, such as uh, um, Seijun, um, what, what is his name? I mean, we're going to see him. I mean, that was the next... Seiju Suzuki's um, Tokyo Police, or Tokyo Drifter. You know, has a, The Tokyo Drifter has a song, I'm the Tokyo Drifter, and all that. You know. <clears throat> so that was an interesting... A, definitely a very different aspect of these movies. I don't know if that... Maybe it was just Nikatsu doing that, but, you know, it's, it's just different. I mean, you know, it's sort of like what... 
James Bond. You know, James Bond the films. Each movie starts with a song that more or less references the title or is named after the name of the movie. You know, so anyway, um, Rusty Knife a little a little little trickier to watch because of the plot and how, confu how confusing it gets. But at the same time, the familiar star power of Ishihara and Kitahara kind of holds this one together a little better than the, the rest of them. So I give this one I give this one an A minus. So, uh, another another decent one. Uh, the next one is where when I started to kind of just lose track, and they all kind of just blurred together at this point, you know. Um, this one is uh, Seijun Seijun Suzuki's Take Aim at the Police Van. I should just show you the, the discs because I don't have the cases. Um, this one runs, it's from 1960, 79 minutes, black and white monol in Japanese with English subtitles, 2.45 to 1 aspect ratio. So again, this one was directed by the great Seijun Suzuki, whom we've seen movies with Criterion 8, such as Branded to Kill, Tokyo Drifter, and uh, Gate of Flesh, I think. And so this one is definitely a little more, a little darker. This one involves... Um, Mishitaro Mizushima playing a guard who is framed for who's like I guess he was he's on a prison bus and the bus is attacked and he's blamed for the attack or something and so he goes out of his way to try and catch the bad guys himself you know and so it's yeah it's definitely a little darker you know the, again the pacing is a lot faster and um, yeah, it was it was interesting, but probably you know it definitely has touches of Suzuki. For instance, there's a scene where they talk about they have kind of a flashback, and it's basically a black room where you see the characters like dying in a black room. That's very similar to what Suzuki would do with his later films, his color films like Tokyo Drifter and Branded to Kill and all that. So it's as a Suzuki film, it works perfectly. As a noir film, you know, it, it works as well, but, you know, it's more of a Suzuki film than it is a noir film. So, I give this one a B. It, it does what it needs to do, but it tends to confuse at times. So, again, maybe, maybe another watch will unconfuse me, but, you know, right now, I'll give it what I give it. So, anyway, the next movie, uh, Cruel Gun Story, directed by... Takumi Furuwakawa, and uh, let's say the Japanese title, Kenju Zankoku Monogatari, and oh, take, take aim at the police van, uh, Sono go, go Sosha o Nerai. Close enough. Anyway, Cruel Gun Story. From 1964, runs 87 minutes in black and white, minoral and Japanese, the thing with subtitles 2.45 to 1 aspect ratio. And um, now this one brings. To the fold, Mr. Joe Shishido, who you know from Branded to Kill. That was his big hit, the one he did with Suzuki. And here he is. Um, I think this was be I think this was a few years before um, before Branded to Kill. And uh, it kind of shows. It's uh, Shishido kind of is. I mean, he seems to kind of play the same character in every movie, almost, you know. So, you know, if you like one of his movies, you'll like the next and all that, if, especially if you like, you know, cheekbones and all that. Yeah. Anyway, um, Shishido plays, he's a guy, an ex-convict who gets out of jail, and he goes right back into starting another, another crime, you know. Another plot, plotting another plan, you know. Um, again, not much to say. It's just a, uh, just another crime movie. Um, probably the, probably the least memorable of the set. Um, I give it a B minus. Again, it does what it needs to do, but it's just, it's not very memorable in my personal opinion. Anyway, the final movie we'll talk about is Takashi Nomura's *A Cult Is My Passport*. Um, it's uh, 97, or Colt Wa Ore no Passport. Uh, it's from 1967, 85 minutes, black and white, monroe, and Japanese with English subtitles, 2.45 to 1 aspect ratio. 
Uh, once again, Shishido's in this one. And this one's definitely a lot better than, I thought this one was much better than Occultist, um, than Cruel Gun Story. It was a lot, uh, much more memorable than the other one. And, uh, I think, I think the plot is just a lot better. Um, let's see, I, gosh, although I can't even remember. Uh, he plays, yeah, he plays a, um, he plays a hitman who's hired by a gang to, you know, do dirty work and all that. And there's a lot of great cinematography in this movie compared to the others. Um, I don't know if that's just Nomura. Nomura has a good sense of it. There's a scene where they're trying out guns, and it automatically cuts to the a sh close up of an exhaust pipe. But the exhaust pipe is double, you know, double cylindered. It looks like from so at first point, it looks like a rifle, like a the barrel, double barrel shotgun or something like that. And I thought I thought that was a really really nice technique. Uh, that was one of the best things about this movie. Um, to say nothing of the finale, which involves um, Shishido's character sending a bomb to kill the the enemy that he's been contracted for, and uh, it's very very intense and very actiony. So I give this one probably a B plus. Definitely one of the, the better ones in the set. Um, so if I had to rank them, it'd be, you know, I Am Waiting's the best, Rusty Knife, it goes, I Am Ranking, Ru I Am Waiting, Rusty Knife, Occult is My Passport, Cruel Gun Story, no, I Am Waiting, Rusty Knife, Occult is My Passport, Take Aim at the Police Van, and Cruel Gun Story. So, overall, I give it a B plus. Um, I would get this just for I Am Waiting, because I really enjoyed that one a lot, and maybe even Rusty Knife, if, if, there, if there was just a set with those two in it, then it'd be perfect, and I would totally pick those up. The other three just didn't really excite me as much as the others did, so yeah, what are you going to do? Anyway, but if you like Japanese you know, action movies, and if you really like Nikatsu as a you know, studio, go for it. Check this one out. I, I, I recommend it. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. Um, we will see you all later for the next set we've uh, got is the... Dusan Makavajev's um, sweet movie, which I sadly am not looking forward to because of, um, no, not sweet movie, because of sweet movie. Dusan Makavajev, um, Free Radical, has three movies in it. There's a Love Affair or the, uh, or the Case of the Missing Switchboard Operator, um, Man is Not a Bird, and Innocence something or other. Uh, Innocence Retained, Innocence something or other. I forgot to get the cases. I could have shown you the discs, but anyway, so we'll see what that's all about. Maybe maybe they won't be as bad as Sweet Movie or WR Mysteries of the Organism, but we'll see. Anyway, this, you know, Criterion is just happy he ain't doing it, so I don't know if I can do it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, you know. I mean, I don't think anything is can be as bad as Who Are You, Polly Magoo, but Maybe in these sets, maybe there's a bit of a worthy opponent. We'll see. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. We will see you all later this week for the Makavaja set. Probably maybe this weekend. So, anyway, until then, goodbye.